here. And then I'm, I am going to go over now to Facebook because, you know, last week we gypped people out. And I didn't really go live there. You were holding back, weren't you? I was holding back. You know, right. we, we don't like holding back. We're, we're knocking on the doorstep of October. So we have to make sure that this is going to be received very well. Go we were just we we're just talking. It's not about being at the right place at the right time. It's about being the right person at the right place at the right time. And those that are, you know, going to be attracted to us and gravitating to this message, then they show up. So it says we're live on Facebook this week. Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, Sorry if you were trying to join us last week and I neglected to follow through with pushing the button. We are here live now. It's another amazing broadcast of Party at the Summit with Coach Steve Gill, Coach Steve Trezek and Gil Zintek. And I opted to be outside today. It is like September 30th. And I'm outside in a tank top and it's amazing. So we're going to talk about some things. And, and this kind of flows with my identity. You know, my identity is being in nature, being outside, moving and grooving. So Steve, take it away. <laughs> well, a lot of folks would consider that the environment. Like, hey, you know what the environment you, you choose to be in. And we're going to talk a lot about identity today. But the premise of our conversation is is I want to make it very clear and have people understand the reason why we're not receiving the results that we want in our life. And we get sort of confused. We get sometimes frustrated and they're like, hey, I'm doing all the things. But what if it wasn't about the doing? What if it was more about who you were choosing to be? And, and that's been a common theme. Like that's not something that if you've been watching us for you know, a few weeks or a few months now, or, or, or you've been in our environment or proximity for years, like that's sort of like, that's the foundation. The foundation is who are you choosing to be versus, Hey, what are you choosing to do? And not to give too much away, but that's really like the concept. And we, it's called the logical level. Cause I think we sort of discussed, I'm not sure if we actually talked about that the last podcast, or if we made, made some posts about it, but once I really understood and got to know the logical level and the concept and, and the really the, the power of the sequential order that the logical level holds, it really became a game changer. And really, it's the fundamentals of the transformation method. You know, so we have 90 days that we go through every quarter and we say, who is, who's prepared, who's ready? to evolve, ex ex expand, elevate, and essentially explore more of who they are so that they can achieve more of who and what they desire, right? Mm -hmm. And when you heard the logical level the first time, Gail, it was a foreign concept to you. Like you weren't like, it was new, but over time, it became a very impactful process for you correct yeah the first time i heard it you know it's it's taking notes it's it's writing it down it's drawing it out we're going to draw it out for you today yeah today's going to be today's going to be visual so this is going to be great and if not if you're watching if you're just listening to this then just uh, follow well, along you'll be fine the vote the uh the narr the narrative will will build it up for you so yes i you know i and i pulled it out because over the last year and a half I remember hearing the logical level and, you know, it was developed by some guy in the 1950s <laughs> and, or maybe sooner, I don't know. So 1950s, Gregory Bates, he was a social psychiatrist and he had really sort of developed this logical level and it's not new. It's, I mean, it's 70 years old. Mm -hmm. Like it's been around for 70 years. It's just, it's one of those where information's everywhere. Like we have the information. The question is, how are you implementing that information in your life? How is it being taught to you? How is it being presented to you so that it makes so much sense? Like simplicity. Complexity is the enemy of execution. So if we can just make things simple, which we want to do here, then you can start living your life at a much better quality. And that's what we want to do. So Gail, my apology for interrupting. Please proceed. <laughs> no. no, I, you know, I... I pulled it out. So 
if you if I go back to this was August, this is the first time I drew it out, and then December, and then it has it has evolved into like this. And I know, like if you look at that, you're gonna go, whoa, I'm not into all that. But here's what it is: it's it's that's the personal development. You know, we all go through personal development, and when we it's precept upon precept. You hear it once, you you hear it. You hear it twice. Okay, now I'm starting to know it a little bit more. And then you hear it again and again. I've heard it now six times and I have a deeper understanding. The logical level hasn't changed. The depth of who I've become in the process is what where the change is. And so... Steve's going to talk about, you know, a lot of us look at our environment and we think, you know, man, I wish I like, why is, why is life happening like this? Why, why does this happen? Why does that happen? Well, like my environment, your environment either sucks or, or it's amazing mm -hmm. or maybe somewhere in between, but your environment is a direct result of who you are. Yep. Because. Yeah. We do what we are and it starts with the identity level and Steve, you and I were doing on a little pre-show, you know, people work from, they get it wrong. They, they, they're working from the top down instead of the bottom up. So, um, or, or from simplicity, they're working from the outside in versus the inside out and people are like, well, what does that mean? Like, it sounds like it's so complex. I'm going to break that down for you. We'll break that down. Gail, feel free to you know, intervene anytime you like, because I know you have some valuable takeaways that you've learned over you know, the last 18 months plus in our time together. And, you know, it's interesting when you said for some people that sucks and it, it's so true because I want you to understand this, everything that you do in your life right now, and everything that you have right now is a direct reflection of who you are and the ways of your being from, from a subconscious identity. And you're absolutely 100% right. It sucks for a lot of people. And they feel trapped. They feel stuck. We want to present an opportunity just to unstick yourself. <laughs> like We're going to provoke you today. Yeah, provoke you. So let's let's get into it. Let's go over the logical level and you know, put it in the perspective of this. I want to ask a question. Let's lead with a question here. How many times have you set a, a goal? Let's say it's a health goal. You know, maybe it's lose and release a couple LBs, a certain amount, or fit into a certain suit or a certain pants, something that's going to be health related, or maybe it's aesthetic, like you just want to feel better, look better be active more efficiently, chase the grandkids around, whatever the case is, or maybe your own kids. But over a year time, maybe it's three months, six months, but I always like to use that gauge of a year. You just don't achieve that goal. You set the goal. At least you think there's a, a strong enough goal attachment to that goal. And then there's the reasons. I just posted that in, in the Facebook group. You know, it's interesting to see what the comments are going to be where it's the reasons. It's your reasons, not your goals that are can prevent you from quitting. Mm -hmm. Are your reasons stronger than your goals? But that's maybe that's next week's conversation. I don't know. <laughs> so think about that. How many times have you set a goal and over a duration of time, you don't, you don't achieve the goal or you achieve the goal, but then you get set back and you go back to your original form. So logical level. Let's get after it. Let me get sure. into a little more. Let me scoot you forward here so you can see. You can use the whiteboard. I'm putting you on. I'm putting you on speaker view too, so people can see it a little better. Oh, thank you. Awesome. All right, no glare. You got a little bit on top side, but you'll be fine. All right, so let's make this simple. I want you to grab a clean sheet of paper, fresh sheet of paper. I want you to draw out a triangle. And I'll draw, and I'll get out of your way so you can see. So here's a triangle right in the middle of your page. And I want you to draw like rungs on a ladder, like stair steps. I want you to draw four horizontal lines that are gonna go right into the center of your triangle like this. 
at the top of the triangle. So you have some vacancies here. You have five spots. I want you to write down the top spot. I want you to write down the word environment. Okay, just like that. Underneath environment, I would, I would like you to write down the word behaviors. Under behaviors, write down the word skills. Now this is an NLP model, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And oftentimes, and again, you can Google this, you can look it up, you can see what the logical level is. You'll, you'll sometimes see in skills, they might re replace that with capabilities. Below skills, write down the word beliefs. Under beliefs, write down the word, the powerful word, the impactful word, identity. Identity is really another word for your self image. And most people don't look at it that way as far as what identity is. But I'm gonna like, it's very specific with this sequential order to how the logical level works here. So what I wanna do is this, let's use, let's go back to our health. Let's go back to what we really truly desire, being fit, being healthy, being active. And it's, it's funny because like we're sitting at the doorstep right now of October. Tomorrow is October 1st. And it's the final quarter of 2021. We, we have this thought process of, you know what? The new year is coming around in three months. And what happens in January for most people when it comes to health and fitness? They set resolutions. Now, I'm not an advocate of waiting for resolutions. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to start now so we have momentum heading into the new year, less stress, less anxiety. And by the way, those are ways of, those are feelings and emotions that you create for yourself. And I can teach you how to get out of those as well. But let's just say you are one that starts the new year and you join the gym like most everybody does. And you join the gym first of the year. What happens or let's say this, how many people would you say are still ambitious, driven, and motivated in the gym three to four weeks in towards the end of January? How many people would you say, what percent of people are still left that started the first of the year? What would you say, Gail? Well, that's a trick question because you asked me that last time and I answered 97% quit, but you said it's more like 85%. 80 to 85% would, would remain, would quit, and 15 to 20 would remain coming to the gym. Yeah, depending on the demographic, I've been in the health club industry for 17 years. I've seen every ebbs and flows. I've seen every metric. I've seen all the history of what people stay. Let's just for the sake, let's say 85%. 85% of people quit after the first month of what they have told themselves they were committed to. Here's what I want you to do. If you're watching this, or if you're listening to this and you've already drawn this out, like again, rungs on the ladder from the top to the bottom, environment, behaviors, skills, beliefs, and identity. I want you to circle behaviors. Because what happens is when you are looking at, oh, and before I, go any further some i don't want to digress here but environment is going to be like your physical surroundings it's going to be what it's going to be your health it's going to be your your body your physical you know you look in the mirror that's your environment it's, it's your bank account it's going to be your business so it's the physical world around you is going to be your environment so you, you look at your environment, you look in the mirror and you, you can't stand what you're seeing in the mirror. Like, oh man, how did I allow myself to be like this? I must start doing something about it. I must create a different behavior so that I can alter 
my result. The result is the environment. So that's what, if you're like most people, that's what you do is you go right to your behavior. But I also, let's say you are, let's go back to that example of being at the gym. And you start the gym first of the month and you are motivated, you are driven, you're ambitious to get that result. But what if you're a person from an identity level that has the belief that you don't stick to anything, especially when it comes to your fitness, because you've seen it last year as a resolution, you saw it the year before that. You saw it sporadically when summer was coming up and he said, oh, I got four weeks to get myself ready for the beach or for the pool. So you get into behavior mode to, tra to change and to start doing something that's going to impact your result, the way that your physical body looks and presents itself. So I want you to go down the bottom and I want you to circle identity. And in this case, if you have the belief that you're not a person that's committed or doesn't stick to anything. I want you to circle beliefs because when we don't enjoy our result and what we're living in our environment currently, we go right to behaviors. That makes sense if you're like most people. But the question we never ask ourselves is who have I been or who am I being that's allowed me to have the environment that exists in my life. So when we start working from a place of identity and beliefs, it inspires us to alter our skills and capabilities. And when we have enough drive to do that, our behaviors might be the same. You still may join the gym the first of the year, but now with your attention to the ways of being, being responsible, let's go back to the transformation equation. R, R times C squared plus T is greater than S. S is your results, your success in what you're accomplishing. So if we go from identity and say ways of being, the characteristics, and these aren't like suggestions of saying, all right, well, I suggest you be committed. I suggest that you're consistent. No, no, these are must, they are must haves when it comes to your identity. What's interesting is everyone I speak with when it comes to improving and enhancing the quality of their health, they're living through the characteristics that are required to elevate health somewhere else in their life. They have a success code already built into them. It's just they haven't created the priorities or the reasons that are strong enough to alter our identity. So you're doing, right here, this is a doing behavior, okay? So just like going to the gym, getting in the car, prepping your meals, eating the healthy foods, these are your ways, these are your doing behaviors. Identities are your ways of being. Your doing is only as effective as the being doing the doing. So you can do all the things you want that you think you know you need to do. Like we know that if we want to be healthier, we want to be fit, we want to have more energy, we want more confidence, we want to reduce the inches in our waistline. We want our clothes to fit better. We know that being on a regular, consistent workout routine is going to be on that list. We know that eating nutritiously well, eating the foods that are going to heal us and fuel us are going to be on that list. We know that we, know we must stay hydrated. We know we must get our rest and recovery. We know we, we know we need to do. We're not doing what we know because our beliefs aren't supporting those behaviors. They might for a short amount of time, i.e., let's talk about the January again. You start the gym, all things are great. You're inspired, you're motivated. I'm gonna do it this year. This is the year I'm gonna get my fitness and health back. But what happens is 
is that our beliefs and our identity eventually is going to take over. And Gail, you said it. I don't know who caught it. I certainly did. But there's five words. Because we hear this. How many times have we heard, especially from a personal development space? Gail, you've heard this before. We are what we do. True. True story. Right? <laughs> we are what we do. That is a true story. And that's what's been fed to us for years and years and years and years and years. So what happens is if I, it reinforces this whole point. Here's my R, my result, your results are going to be effective on what you're doing. But that's not where we coach from. Where we coach from is we do what we are. And that's what you said in the beginning as we got introduced into this concept, Gail. We do what we are. And what we are is our subconscious identity. So once we have awareness and we place our attention, because we are where our attention is, to the ways of being, which is going to support our beliefs, which is going to support our skills. And those skills will create an automatic behavior, which creates a habit. Your environment changes. And oftentimes it's so insidious, you don't even realize it's happening. But I ask this question to every promise keeper and promise keepers are part of our promise keeper community, our 90 day transformation method is how long do you choose to live this lifestyle? And that's the question you have to ask because when things get tough and you're not seeing the environment, the results because of the behaviors you're doing, we never look at who am I being? And one of those characteristics, which I just explained a few minutes ago, was you must be consistent. And if that was the deciding factor of whether, if whether I'm going to get that walk in today or not, or whether I'm going to eat the salad or eat the pizza, was going to be from, well, who do I choose to be right now in this situation when this fork's in the road? I choose to be committed. Well, the commitment's going to be eating that salad. The commitment's going to be taking that walk versus sitting on the couch. And then the consistency. So, Gail, you've heard this many a times. Where's the biggest takeaway for you here? Well, as you were sharing, I wrote down our belief aren't supporting our behavior. And I think for most people, I'll speak for myself. I didn't have the belief in myself that I could be a fit person for the rest of my life until I made that commitment. I, I changed my belief. I created the belief in myself. I could through learning to be a promise keeper. So what I did for 30 days, for 60 days, for 90 days, that was it. The behavior helped me to create the belief in myself that I could be something different, that I could live my life um, in a more healthy, fulfilled way because I'd gone through the false starts. I've been on the yo-yo. I started to, you know, I would lose the weight because I wanted to be I wanted to be thin. So I changed my behavior to just to be thin. I, it wasn't until I changed my behavior because I changed who I chose to be at a, at the subconscious level. I chose to be a healthy person. I chose to do the activities and keep those activities in my life that created that awareness. And so my beliefs grew in myself, which, which created, you know, your knowledge and your skills change your behavior. 
So what I learned through the transformation method, the 12 weeks, you know, time and time again, that knowledge changed my behavior because I was, I was equipped now with something different that I could, that I could focus on and I could do. And it be, it altered my belief in myself, which changed my identity. You know, like I look at what I, I look at what I wrote down and, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big affirmation person. Mm -hmm. You know, I am statements are important. Cody Bateman taught me that for the last 14 years. And so what I did with, with this is when I was writing down, who am I at my identity level? And then I changed those into I am statements that became very powerful for me to, to really see and internalize who I am at the subconscious level. And so what I've learned over the past year and a half and, and understanding this is we all can expand, explore, evolve into mm -hmm who we choose to become and it just takes it it takes the commitment it takes the commitment and the consistency and giving yourself the time owning it you know we we've defined responsibility as um if you want if you if something to help me out here steve when you're responsible for something you you cause something to happen that's it like, I took responsibility to cause a different person in me to emerge. And so if you're looking at your life and you say, man, I don't like the results that I'm getting here. It's because you just haven't taken responsibility and ownership yeah. at a level that's going to help you. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help you learn what that looks like for yourself. We're not all we're not all the same. I, I'm not the same as Steve. Steve's um, coached many of us through the transformation method, and we're all different. We all have different ideals, goals. Um, we're all coming at it from a different level of belief in ourselves, and we're all growing. And, you know, we're coming up on the fourth quarter of 2021. You know, where do you want to be? where do you want to be for 2020? I, I'm really super excited about 2022. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I like, I just have a feeling that it's going to be this extraordinary year. And I came up with this question. I want to ask this um, to our audience that's listening. So what can you do in 90 days when you choose to show up for yourself every day? Like, what could you do in 90 days if you chose to show up for yourself every day? Um, I, I chose this last 90 days to run a quarter mile every day. I, today was day 89. I have to tell you, I'm really excited to, come, to have day 90 come and go. <laughs> <laughs> because one, you know, I've learned that I can run a half mile every day for 90 days in a row. The half mile hustler. And even if I don't love it, I do it because I said I would. And, you know, that's the power of becoming a promise keeper. So it tells me what else can I, like, here's, here's what's happened in 90, in 90 days of running a half mile every day, I'll have run 45 miles. That's the equivalent of me running from my house to Lake Michigan. <laughs> mm. Like, think about it. The, the compound effect, my legs got stronger, which helped me go on longer bike rides. Um, which helped me put in 300 miles in the month of September of moving this body of mine. And so it's a compound effect. And we all have the ability to create things in our life that we might not have thought possible. And that's what the logical level does. As you work on your identity so that you can have, you know, that strong belief in yourself that you can develop the skills and capabilities that you need so that the behavior that you, that you put into practice every day will create the environment you choose to live in. Yeah. 
your behavior is only going to be as consistent as your identity is. So that's where we work from. We work from your ways of being. And as you think, and I think most of us probably heard this at some point, as you think becomes your life. So, well, what a great opportunity to share an impactful concept with folks here today. And I'll leave it at this. If, if this resonates with you and you see yourself at a higher expanded place, in the next three months, like heading into 2022, there are still spots available and they're open for the 90 day transformation method. We're starting like it's a soft launch tomorrow. We're getting onto a a group conversation tomorrow, going over expectations, setting the, the, the parameters for what we're going to be going through every day, level of accountability, talking about things like identity, personal integrity, and then our official launch is going to be on Monday. So Monday is going to be the hard launch where everything's in effect. So if this resonates with you, reach out to me, reach out to Gail. We'll be happy to have a conversation with you. Or if you're just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm ready. Like I'm the right person at the right place at the right time. Let's go. I want to honor myself with 90 days of commitment. What can I do in 90 days when I show up for myself every day? Great question, Gail. I wrote that question down when you presented it too. And you can go right to the site. Go to coachtrezek.com forward slash transform check it out. And if that's what you choose to commit to, if you're not hundred percent committed, don't participate. Please don't. We'll be there for you. Ready for you to expand, evolve and elevate the quality of your life. So. Wow. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not even, like, think about the environment. Think about the people that you surround yourself with. Like, that in itself, it forces you to elevate your identity, raise that inter- internal thermostat just by being around people that live at a higher temperature of their health, fitness, and wellness. That in itself, probably it has all the value in it. Mm-hmm. So thank you for your time and attention. Gail, great view behind you because you're enjoying that 75 degree day. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. All right. I'm out. We're out.